I just loved India and its leopards because uh, I just I've never thought of the idea of, of seeing cats in these kind of weird and wonderful environments. Seeing a leopard in the fourth largest city in the world, seeing a leopard on, on a beach in Sri Lanka. I mean those those kinds of things to me are just it's it's something that one dreams about and uh, I'm incredibly grateful to Steve Winter and uh, his team for, for allowing me to to be part of that experience. I don't think that I, I could have in my wildest dreams expected to see those cats in those kinds of environments. And it really just shows how adaptable leopards are. And when I say adaptable, what I mean is really just how they've evolved this incredibly kind of perfect medium body size. And it means that they can really hang on in a lot of places where things like tigers, jaguars and lions can't. Because those guys need a lot more protein than they just eat bigger things. In the next 35 years, Africa's human population growth rate will surpass that of India and China. So I think we've got a lot to learn in the way that we've got to use the landscape for our agriculture, for our urban developments, and how we can fit that in the context of wildlife management and still preserving our natural areas. And I think India is kind of an interesting case study in that way that although they've got so many people, they've still got some incredible protected areas and uh, they've managed to defend them and, and keep them in a semi-pristine state uh, when the odds are really against them. So I think, I think there's a hell of a lot to learn in that way. I think there's a lot of scope for people from Africa and from India to really work together and from Sri Lanka. I think there's um, incredible kind of policy lessons and also just case studies that, that we can share. Um, and I don't think it's happening enough, um, not at least in, in, in academic circles at large. I think it, it's definitely something that, that, that could really benefit um, all stakeholders in, in just understanding leopard ecology and, and management in a much broader context. Um, I always say if you really want to understand a species, see it in a number of different countries and really see the dynamic there because that's I think what really contributes just a little more to, to your understanding of large of how, especially when it comes to large carnivores, how they work, how they operate, it's really different and, and sometimes contrasting environments.